Thanks for coming. Um, my name is Marco Rana. Uh, I'm a member of the OWASP uh, London chapter, also the project leader of the CISO guide, which is newly published book. Um, this team four, if you're interested, if you are successful with this talk, and I hope to, <laughs> <laughs> you can purchase the book as well, besides or get it for free from uh, the site that we show the link also. Um, so today we're going to talk about actually two projects, the OVAS CISO guide and the OVAS CISO survey, for which uh, Tobias is actually the project leader. So it is like a talk divided in, let's say, sorry, uh, three parts. So the first part, I will introduce uh, the CISO guide, um, the goals of the guide, why we actually developed this guide. Um, give you some background, um, the, uh, the plan that we actually follow for the development of the project. Um, um, then um, Tobias will introduce himself uh, and introduce the CISO uh, survey, uh, which is basically a parallel project um, that was actually done um, uh, almost like in sync. Uh, and then at the end, I will wrap up with more uh, information about uh, some situational awareness about, you know, you being a CISO. By the way, how many of you are a security manager in this room? Okay, so it's a fair amount. Uh, so this is actually directed towards your role and responsibility. So I hope that this is going to be um, a, a good value for you. So little presentation short. Adam, we don't have the About Me page. You'll find the Amount Me page in the PDF file. Um, so by, I'm um, also a manager in risk and controls for Citigroup, but I'm not talking here on behalf of Citigroup. Uh, just wanted to be sure. Uh, but anyway, I have 15 years experience in application security, working as a consultant. I work for NASA as well. So, um, so that's my background. Tobias, would you like to introduce yourself? Um, as, as I said, my name is Tobias. Um, I'm, I'm running Temp Stanley, which is a CISO advisory. So I, I kind of see more different CISOs, but then maybe not as in depth as Marco in his role. So it was quite nice to bring these things together for the CISO guide, but you will see in the survey. Thank you, Tobias. So let's start with the, uh, how we started. Um, so the guy started actually 2011, right in the draft. Um, so, OVAS has a mission, and the OVAS mission is to make application security visible to the application stakeholders so they can make informed risk decisions. So, the question is who are these application stakeholders, right? So, we have information security managers, we have software developers, we have penetration testers. Right. So now the logical question is how successful all of us has been to reach out specific functions or application security stakeholders such as uh, information security managers. And it would be interesting to ask this question, um, what do you actually think is relevant for your profession, for your role um, in application security for you? And so understanding the different views. And so instead to get assumptions here, we actually refer to some statistical data surveys. And one of these came from the uh, 2011 Poneman Institute and in Security Innovation that we referred to. And it was actually show, first question was, are applications secure? And again, I want to, not to give bias here, just presenting you the data. Answer was, most of the developers they think they are not secure, and information security managers are a little bit more optimistic. Second question, do you have an SSDLC, security in the software development life cycle? 80% of developers versus 64% of IS managers say there is no build security model in the SDLC. Third question, are application compliant? So is that um, your web application compliant with standards and regulation? This is, seems, to be, seems to be an agreement. 15% uh, of developers and 12%, they are basically saying that their application don't meet any security compliance standard. 
Has your application been breached in the past by security incident? 68% of developers say there has been breach. Um, and 47% of IS managers there saying that their application had a security breach in the last two years. And the, first, the last one, did you receive application security training? And here it seems to be we have an agreement. Mostly 50% uh, of developers and managers say that uh, they didn't receive any security training. So it looks like we have an awareness gap here that we need to bridge. Um, it's very important that we do that because otherwise uh, communication, if there is no good communication of what an application security program is within the organization, it's very, very difficult to execute your goal. So what is in the balance are software developers on one side and interesting, so I put them on the, on the right hand side because I think typically software developers, at least for all of us, have more weight. Um, information security managers on the other side. And so perhaps it would be interesting to see if we can bridge this awareness gap with a, with a guy specifically targeted for information security managers. So, but what are the initial goals in order to fulfill this gap? So the first goal is increased visibility. So basically, um, specifically for application security manager, or what actually is important in application security. Providing guidance. Um, as, as I mentioned before in the, in the study, it shows that um, the adoption of SSDLC is not very widespread. So the majority of say they're actually not having SSDLC implemented. So any guidance here we can provide how we initiate a program, application security program. Meeting compliance requirements, that to me was kind of shocking to be honest. Coming from financial industry um, uh, sector where compliance is basically one of the main drivers. So certainly we need to bridge that gap because compliance can be a driver for application security and we'll show uh, in the guide how. Focus on risk. Um, if you remember what I mentioned before, according to this data, um, the majority, they are not aware, the majority of the software developers application security managers, they are not aware of incidents targeting applications, which is also shocking. So it's either a problem of awareness here or visibility of data and security incidents. So creating this awareness from, from information security is very important. Measuring and reporting, if, if you are a manager, you want to manage your organization, you have to have measurements. I'm not preaching measurements, but I'm saying if you want to provide visibility or how effective you are executing your program, metrics and measurements are actually almost like a, a requirement for any application security program. And, and at least, well, not, uh, not the least, but the last is the rollout of a security training. And that's where we're going to have um, a lot of value by providing this. So how we developed this guide? So um, basically everything started last year exactly in New York. Um, I was in 2012. <coughs> um, I was presenting at the uh, New York chapter the, uh, the CISO guide uh, invited by uh, the chapter in, in New York, but also in, uh, in London where I'm based and in Atlanta. <coughs> so we basically presented the idea to Wu. To, to CISO. They actually, we did, a, I believe, a JP Morgan Chase here. We did a, a, a Morgan Stanley in, uh, in uh, London. So we specifically target CISO from a perspective of, are you interested on this draft? What is your feedback? Recognizing that the feedback has to be uh, more structured, we also initiated a CISO survey. So at stage two, we initiated a campaign to, uh, to ask CISO to participate to the survey. At stage three, we actually collected the data and analyzed the data. So I believe Tobias did the first presentation of preliminary results at the AppSec U recently uh, in, in uh, Germany. Then at stage four, we basically say, okay, these are, that's what we know what the CISO think about application security according to their function. This is what we are proposing. Now let's tailor the guide to what actually the CISO survey tells us. Because we are not proposing our view, we are trying to make it easier for a CISO to do his job. 
right? So it's very important to do this tailoring. And so that's what we actually done in the guide. And basically, today we are with you to present the first release of, uh, of the guide, the Application Security USA. Okay, at this point, I'll turn it over to Tobias to talk about the survey, and then we'll wrap up later with the conclusions. Thank you. Okay. Um, thanks a lot, Marco. Uh, that was quite interesting. Um, as, as you said, we, we work actually quite close together, so both projects feed into each other, and the insights we gain from one will feed back into the other, and I hope we will have another CISO uh, survey next year and um, potentially another update on the CISO guide next year. Let me go into this. So may maybe before I give you the results, uh, two disclaimers. First, we have not finished yet. We finished the CISO guide first, so I hope we can release the CISO survey by next month. Uh, second, the, yeah, the methodology. Before presenting any survey data, I should always speak about the methodology first. So we collected and we had an online survey. We asked CISOs and information security managers not only from the OWASP community, so we went outside of the OWASP community as well. So there is a certain selection bias because obviously it was biased by basically who we could reach. Um, but we tried to be as objective as possible at that point. We had uh, over a hundred CISOs uh, submitting data. So it's not perfect, but it's a reasonably deep uh, or bro broad set of data. Um, it was quite a deep survey, so we had, uh, I think it took r roughly 25 minutes to complete all the questions. And I will not be able to present all the results because it's quite comprehensive, but I, I picked out some of the most interesting bits, and you will see some bits in the CISO guide, and you will see more in the, in the survey report uh, in, in a couple of weeks. So this is the sneak preview for the AppSec US. So the first thing we found, which was uh, kind of obvious, but still worth stating, external threats are on the rise. So the CISOs were very, very unanimous in this amount that if, when it comes to external threats, like uh, phishing, website attacks, 85% saw an increase on that. Compared to things where people worried maybe five years ago more, like insider, uh, internal attacks, fraud, and all these things, most people would say this is fairly stable. So we, we, people saw a shift towards more external risks. The second, a, a second part we saw is also not only the question whether it's external, internal, but also is this more infrastructure specific, or do we see actually a rise or a change in application security specific risks and threats? And here, well, maybe I have to explain this. Uh, what we basically asked is the CISO to allocate how much percentage of the threats is coming from infrastructure, how much percentage is coming from application, and how much is coming from something else, other. And we had, on, we, on average, the people would, whoops, I have to be careful here. Uh, on average, people would say about 30% came from infrastructure, about 70%, 80% would be application specific. So most of the CISOs are aware that their risks are coming actually more from application. That was a, a kind of the snapshot. We were also interested in whether there's a trend, whether there's a change over the last 12 months, what, what people, in which way is this going? And so we asked, okay, compared to 12 months ago, do you see uh, some of these areas have changed, and people have clearly stated that application has increased. Like uh, two-thirds have seen that the, the threats in application and the, the risks in application security have increased over the last 12 months. While for infrastructure, uh, the majority would say it's, it's the same or, or stable. There is still an increase, but it's not that dramatic. So I, from, from my my take from this is so far that infrastructure security is fairly stabilizing, while application security issues, threats are 
clearly on the rise, especially when it comes to external threats. Um, well, so we asked about the threats, and one of the questions is, of course, also what, what specific threats or what specific concerns are you thinking about? And what's maybe interesting is um, when I talk with CISOs, they always complain, oh, we don't have enough budget. So in my kind of personal bias, I think, oh, budget is the most important thing. Actually, no. Interestingly, lack of budget uh, was, was number four of their concerns. Number one of the concerns was actually this lack of awareness of application security issues within the organization. At least that's what the data told me. Um, which maybe feeds back also into what you heard from Marco, that there is this per perception gap or awareness gap between developers, information security managers. Second one was secure, uh, insecure source code development, poor inadequate testing methodologies. Then we have, of course, the budget question and third-party suppliers. Uh, this morning there was a panel where people also talked about, well, we can develop very secure software, but then how about our outsourcing partners? Can we enforce that there? So that's the threats and that's kind of what, what are the concerns. The next question is, okay, what do you do about it? So your investment strategy, will you, will you invest more and where? And I can say for infrastructure, this seems, there is a certain increase, but again, the majority seems to be, okay, this is fairly stable. We will probably stay roughly in the same investment level for infrastructure. While for application security, this is, well, significantly higher than for, more people will invest more in application security over the next months, over the next year. Um, let me see. So they, they, if they want to invest more, the question is be where, what are their key priorities? What, what would you be looking for, for these CISOs? What, where will be, they be making the investments? Sorry, I speak too fast for myself. Um, the first one was clearly security awareness, which is actually a, a nice thing. I, it makes me quite happy because that gives me hope that maybe we can bridge this awareness gap that Marco showed before. Second one is security testing, which is kind of maybe not surprising. And third one is something that I like specifically, is secure development lifecycle. Because if we can improve secure development, maybe we see less application security problems further down the line. It would be nice. So these are the key, these are the top three investment priorities uh, for the CISOs that we asked. Um, one thing that was a little bit, you could say maybe shocking or a little bit a wake-up call is we also asked them whether they have a security strategy. And yes, more than half have a security strategy, but only about 27% of them believe that their current application security strategy adequately addresses new risks, like mobile devices, like social networking, cloud computing. So we found this actually, well, con considering that so many people are using these technologies already, we found this fairly low. So there may be an urgent need to update security strategies. Another thing we also asked is, well, how, how long does your security strategy plan into the future? Is that maybe, do you plan one day? Do you plan a month? Do you plan five years? Do you plan ten years? <coughs> we found some people who actually have security strategies with a three-month horizon, which was uh, kind of surprising for me because I think, well, if you spend so much effort on writing this stuff and it's only valid for three months, well, what do you do then? I mean, you write it again or I mean, you're, you're going to be pretty busy. I would say that the median, the highest was for one year. The average, the average uh, timeline for a security strategy was 20 months. So if you average on, on kind of all the security strategies, you would have roughly one and a half to two years. That would be the average. I marked the two years part. It's not, it's not the median and it's above the average, but I, I found there is a certain sweet spot for this. 
Maybe let me ask you, why would you have a security strategy? Okay, we have some Caesars in the room. Who of you has a security strategy? Okay, some people in the back. Why do you have one? What do you do with it? Well, the thing is that I'm not the one responsible for that in my organization. I know it, it, there's one, but I think we're in that 27%. Because we know that security is important. We are trying, we are first uh, selling security services, so it's important for us to be secure too. Yeah, oh, there's someone in front. <laughs> Let's mix. So, what, what do you see is the benefit of this strategy? Well, first of all, I'm not a CISO. I talk to my CISO almost every day. Um, and the reason we push a strategy is they need to invest in certain technologies, they need to invest in certain tooling and uh, they need to do it for strategic planning. Once they know what the plan is, they need to put that into action. And two years does, I agree with the, the sweet spot, um, sometimes the year is a little bit short for us, so two years seems about right. Absolutely, it helps you make investment decisions. It helps you guide. You, you, you know if, if some salesperson comes along and says, well, this product is great, maybe you don't have a budget or you don't have the plan, but if you have a two-year plan, you, you know where you're gonna invest. And there's something interesting we found. If you, if you are wondering, oh, I can't get enough investment budget for application security, we found an interesting correlation between whether you get investments or whether you increase application security investments and the duration of your security strategy. So um, we actually searched, we analyzed the data for different aspects, what would increase or, or whether there's a correlation between increase of application security investment, and we looked for whether you had a recent breach, whether you have an application security management system, whether your company size is bigger, uh, whether you are a CISO or maybe just a, well, just whether a, a normal information security manager. So far, we have not found that these had a significant impact. That may be mostly due to maybe our data set is not big enough, but we didn't see a significant impact on whether you can increase your application security investment. There's a question. Uh, did we look for acquisitions? Uh, no, we did not. We did not. And, and I'm. No, we did not search for M&A, but we should maybe do that next year. It would be interesting to see that as a driver. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one thing we found is. There, is a there, there seems to be a correlation between an increase of application security investment and whether you have a two-year security strategy. So if the normal, the average population is here, so you have about 47% say we increase, <coughs> about 40% have a stable and a, de a decrease in, that's about 15%, 14%. While if you look only at the subset of people who have a two-year security strategy implemented, they go to up to 60, 57, or no, 59% of them say they will increase the application security investment. So there's a chance that you have a better argument position. You can reason better, you can plan better, you can reserve your budget already ahead. So that gives you a, a really an edge in getting your investments up or in, in making the right choices. And on the other side, I also took the, this out of the data set so you can see kind of what, what the, the remainder part of the population is. And there you can see, well, it's, it's less in the in increase. And actually what's even the triggering point is you have also a lot of more people decreasing, actually, if you don't have a good plan. So I found this noteworthy. So one thing, if you go out and if, if you think about, well, I want to ramp up my application security and I don't get a budget, Maybe you should think about getting an application security strategy plan with maybe two years time frame. Um, let me see the time. Yeah, okay, I think two more minutes. Um, one thing I found a little bit worrying is we also asked people whether you have an application security management system or like a uh, maturity model, benchmarking. And if you combine these three, yes implemented, yes without verification, and yes currently we are working on it, that's barely 
meaning 75% don't have it, which was kind of stunning to me because mm. if you want to write your strategy, you should know where you are so you can know where you're going. So, yeah. Um, fortunately, there's a glimmer of hope because these 40% say no, but we are considering it. So maybe in one year's time, we can move some of these people from here to here. That would be quite nice. And maybe we can uh, inform them about OpenSAM and other models. Um, so what, concluding, what, two other things that we found is what were the top five challenges to actually delivering your application security programs? And again here, actually, again, we didn't have budget as number one. So what kind of maybe comes to mind first, oh, we don't have enough money? No, actually, no. We don't have enough people who have the right skills, was number one, and, and quite clearly. Number two, security awareness by developers. Kind of goes hand in hand with the skilled resources to some degree. Management awareness. I mean, you hear the word awareness coming up quite often. Um, so this plays again towards this awareness gap that we have between development and information security managers. Then we have, of course, the budget and some organizational change, which may also lead back into M&A activity, potentially. And last but not least, we also asked the CISOs, hey, okay, what project did you find most useful for your organization? And I have to make a disclaimer. We did not give the CISOs a list of 140 active projects. Okay, we, we could have done this, but Honestly, this is very hard. I mean, it's very hard if you have to go through a 140 item list. So we chose some of them that, that we kind of pre-selected from previous interviews. And with a far, far reach up was, of, of, of course, OWASP top 10. So this had a very majority of this is the best project for us in, in using in our organization. And the other four came pretty much even on the same level. So they are ranked. But um, I would say the level of significance of the ranking is not so high. So you could actually probably switch them or see them equal, or equal ranking. Uh, so cheat sheets was number two. Development guide, CISOs found useful. Uh, secure coding practices quick reference guide. It's a very long word for a very short, uh, for a very short document, only 17 pages. Uh, basically giving you secure coding guidelines. Uh, and the application security FAQ. So the, these were the five projects other CISOs found useful. And maybe if you don't use them now, maybe you take a look. I mean, it might be useful to learn from your peers. Yeah, and with this, I hand back to Marco to talk a little bit more about the CISO guide and how it can help uh, give you guidance in the process. Thank you, Tobias. Thank you. So we are wrapping up, so in the last 10 minutes, and then... Um, Five minutes for questions, but uh, I really like interactions, so stop at any time. Um, but um, so we've seen on the survey this important result. So what we have done with this data, we actually changed the formatting and organization of the CISO guide to make sure that we highlight these main points, like the top five projects and uh, the main concern about uh, security training being the top one. So we actually refocus the CISO guide accordingly. But before we do that, um, before I show you how, I want to show you this little situation uh, awareness uh, slide here. And this is explaining you uh, how the CISO guy was actually uh, incepted, uh, what actually caused me to write the first draft. And uh, imagine you have basically a budget meeting. So we are towards the end of the year. Maybe some of you are directors here. We are asking for budget for your team for a new application security program. So, and there we go, we have the CISO that asks the business. Um, he wants to make sure that the applications are compliant with PCI. And by the way, if you're aware, OVA sub 10 is actually part of the uh, PCI DSS as being uh, mandatory to test for those vulnerabilities. So it's a good reason basically to advocate for budget. Um, besides the OVS um an application security program and SSDLC. So that's the question. And 
proposing, uh, asking for budget for um, financing its uh, application security program. The business executive, the first question will, uh, or the first answer will be, um, can you determine how much you need to invest in this program? Do you have a plan, a business plan, um, and a business case for this? Obviously, you mentioned um, compliance, but what about security and engineering? What about risk management? Specifically, as the, 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 um, the pie is one, and you have different management asking for budget for their teams, you may have, for example, an engineering manager that will ask, you know, yes, but can we budget also for secure coding, training, and software tools and uh, for developers, right? So basically, you are competing budget, competing uh, managers asking for budget, and I ask the CISO, do you have a plan also for security training and secure code, uh, um, coding standard for developers as well? The risk manager will ask also, yes, but can you justify this budget from a risk management perspective? Is it just uh, is it compliance? Well, you know we have been breached. You know our application has been attacked. We have been compromised. So do you, do, can you provide me a business case also that you're reducing risk for the corporation, specifically for high-risk high applications? Uh, a security testing manager obviously gets this opportunity also for ask for his budget, for his team, to do more vulnerability assessment, for, do, for doing security testing, um, for, for training the security testers as well. So basically, this is a situation awareness um, that um, it might be important for you as a CISO, for which you are asking yourself, now how, I, how I'm going to write a business plan for my business executive to justify this budget, this investment? And that's where we come in with the CISO guide. So basically, the CISO guide is structured in four parts. Uh, it's also structured in a way that application security is actually uh, a journey for the CISO, not a destination. And what I mean, we start from the business case, we, um, we uh, focus on the risk management piece because most of the CISOs today are more uh, involved in, in understanding risk for their organization and, and, and translating uh, technical risk to business risk to their business to get budget. So it's important that we, we structure that uh, very, very, very clearly. Then the core part is application security program. So appealing to the CISO functions. So in this is actually uh, covered in the book. Uh, if you don't have time to read the 100 pages, which obviously I will invite you, but you want to have a quick reference of what is a guide is, go to page 99, and in page 99 we basically provide all the CISO functions mapped to the different sections of the guide and mapped to the OVAS project They can help you to deliver your strategy. So, so that's what we actually do in the say, no, this is not our view of the world. This is the CISO view. This is the role and responsibility of the security manager. And our application security can actually fit in the role and responsibility of the CISO. And how HOVAS can help with projects such as CLASP, such as SAM, capability models, and so forth. So after you've done this, what basically means at part three, you have approved the, pro uh, approved the program, you've done your business case, you put it in the context of risk management, and then you are part four, which is what? Measuring, and ma managing uh, your program, your application security program, managing, measuring your SSD or C program, and measuring um, your vulnerability um, management within the organization. Because obviously at this point, you have to provide visibility that your budget has been going to something that actually works. And how you can provide this a bit to senior management that your, your actual program works is by providing metrics, right? That, if, that shows that you reach the goal that you were wanted to achieve for that year in terms of vulnerabilities you want to uh, uh, address, in terms of coverage of application that you want to cover as part of the SSDLC or the vulnerability assessment. 
So uh, this is basically is uh, the pluribus, pluribus union of elements that through this, uh, through this journey, we hope that the Caesar will actually help uh, himself by reading this guide to basically make a business case to the senior management. So at this point, I'm, I'm actually open to questions. I will actually leave 10 minutes because I don't want to really get you bored on the, the single parts of the guide. I will actually invite you to go to the existing floor where we have the books for sale. And the book is like, what, $10? Uh, the, the, actually, it's not only on the 16th floor. You can also buy it up there with your blue chips. So in case you haven't spent them on a T-shirt yet, you can get it there, or you just download it for free. So I think yes. on the next slide we have the URL. Right. So in the next slide, um, the acknowledgement, first of all, uh, every project of all of us is a team effort, right? So I'm the project leader, but I couldn't have done this without the help of Tobias, Erwin, uh, Andy, uh, just myself here, but Stephanie that we are here in the, in the second row. Seeing all these people and calling, of course, uh, all these people are actually very instrumental to get this successful uh, project that we are actually releasing today. Uh, and here are the further references as well. So you can actually download it for free on this link. Uh, any questions? Yes. Hi, thank you so much. Um, I just wanted to ask you, uh, as far as the questions to CISOs, um, have you seen, have you talked to them at all about the way they do security versus risk? Um, and, and wondering, you know, for, as far as application security in particular, do you have any sense on have, have they taken real inventory of their application portfolio, map those to sort of risk buckets, and deal with application security as with a risk-based focus? I'm just wondering if you have any mm -hmm. insight versus a fixed everything shop. I've seen, I've seen shops that take application security very seriously and fix everything, but then are perceived as obstacles to the business. Um, so I'm wondering if there's any background or color, that type of information. Right. Security versus risk. Do you want to respond then? Well, we, we did not ask specifically whether people always applied risk management techniques to make this decision. We did not ask for that, actually, but it's a very good proposal for next one. Um, there were some colors to that. So there was some flavor whether you use risk management in general. But it didn't mean, you know, you can use risk management. That doesn't mean you apply it to your decision making, necessarily. So, yeah. But what, what, just one remark we, in the guide, we actually have that approach you're actually asking for. So basically, yeah. we, we, we talk about having an inventory of assets and dealing with application security as you're dealing with IT assets. Yeah. So, so basically, yeah. Yeah, Marco is absolutely right. The, the guide is advocating this strategy. Just in the survey, we didn't verify whether or, or see how much people would be doing that already. So I'm currently going through a risk ranking process. And for my colleague here or anybody else, I, you know, I'd be happy to share kind of what we learned from that either at one of these sessions yep. in the future because sure, we okay. have literally hundreds of, of apps that we develop and ship. So we're a software vendor, P PTC out of Boston. Um, that's not a pitch or anything. Um, <laughs> but we have a lot of the same problems where we're all excited about app security. I've got executive buy-in, which is excellent, all right? And they're, they're like, go. Right? But I don't know what the risks are across those apps. An app that may have a bunch of vulnerabilities may not be high risk to my customers or to us as an organization. Others with less vulnerabilities, but <clears throat> they're hit by 10,000 users in one company a day could present a really big risk. So we're trying to go through that risk ranking process now. Um, so th there'll be some good lessons, I think, to come out of that. Don't run away. I'm going to run later to you to exchange cards to get an interview yeah. with you as well. I just wanted to say one follow-on. What, what I've seen with the risk-based approach is that you can actually use that to justify a mature application security program by saying yeah. we, need to, we don't need to fix everything. Yeah. However, we need to, a comprehensive evaluation of what we've got in terms of our vulnerabilities yeah. Yeah. so that we can say why we're not fixing this thing and do that you know, with knowledge rather than without. Right. Yeah. That is exactly what we, are ad what we are advocating in the CISO guide. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Seems so we are aligned there very well. Yeah. 
Other questions? Interest? Yep. 16th floor, is that where I can get the book? Yeah. 16th floor, or actually you can just no, go to the uh, merchandise here. Yeah. yeah. So the we, we brought it down to make it easier, so you don't have to go the whole way up. Yeah, you can just go <coughs> around the corner. Yeah. Uh, and you can use your blue chips if you want. Other questions? Good. So okay, then... Uh, just one thing. As the gentleman was asking you, perhaps, uh, perhaps if I quite understand, that um, one of the drives is also new technology. So the drives new investment, how you secure new technology. So we have this in the guide, actually. It's not just about fixing vulnerabilities. The risks are in inherent of making changes to applications, like moving to mobile, integration, integrating with cloud, right? So we have that called a web 2.0 technology, right? So that drives risk. So in the guide, we actually have a special section about you know, how you make sure that if you have this new technology, you also have new standards within your corporation that you actually align to to validate uh, gaps and vulnerabilities. Yes. Still have five minutes, so. Yeah. <laughs> so we're ahead of time. Yeah. Thank you very much. And as you say, you can download here or buy it there. And yeah, thanks a lot for coming, Thank you for guys. Your time. Thank you. Thank you very much.